you were talking about leaf vegetation. Yes. Okay. Zinc, manganese, magnesium, and, yes. and, and iron. Yeah, zinc, manganese, magnesium, iron, sulfur. Yes. Is, sulfur is another one that should probably be called a macronutrient. I agree. Um, these are very important uh, at those timings. So I, I will leave the boron out of the discussion at that timing. But, but just it, for clarification on that part, like right before rapid growth. Well, you want to... Or even before rapid <clears throat> growth. Like we're, Exactly. You know. Okay. So yeah, then... So it's going to take a little while to get a response from a nutrient. Because the nutrient has to go maybe with the exception of urea. You know, that's a pretty quick response. Yeah. But the nutrients will generally take a few days. It, it's going either into the ground. Um, well, let's leave foliar applications out of it, too. Yes. Yep. But say you put something on the soil, it's going to have to then become activated. It's going to have to become, you know, more uh, available to the plant. Make sure it's in the right state, the charge state, so it can go in. Once it gets into the plant, it's going to change or dictate a response. And then that's going to cause the growth we want. So generally with a nutrient, you want to be a good week before you're going to actually need that nutrient, assuming we can control the, the precipitation. Okay. So then you talked about the flowering time, fl time yeah. frame. So flowering. Calcium, boron, a little bit of moly, you said? Uh, calcium, boron, calcium, boron, zinc, a little bit of moly, and that's going to be a really nice flower application. Um, is there a world where the, all four of those tank mix together? Yes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh, really? Robert just gets his blender and just starts, you know, shaking it up. And yeah. yeah. Stay tuned. <laughs> Stay we'll tuned to, for that. We play that Macarena song. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you should see oh. Houston. It's a shit show. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so then finally I Houston. I've been, my mom's from texas so i spent the, san antonio houston all the way uh it's great i i've traveled extensively and texas has found i'm i'm at home i like houston that's a great place to be it is micros micros <laughs> oh yeah Ripen. oh yeah that stuff ripening time frame oh you're right that's exactly where we were talking now so once now we jump back into ripening ripening's a whole different animal and we can even talk about some of the macronutrients so a classic one that I've never got an argument about is potassium. Yep. So potassium manages a lot of water. Mag mag uh, potassium is really important uh, for sizing. Uh, if you start looking at some of the old pioneer seed work, they uh, did a study showing that if you can increase the width of a kernel by the thickness of a paper, that was worth about three to five bushels per acre. Like, unreal. So oh, I believe it. If you can plump up whatever you're growing, that's going to usually be good for the farmer. Uh, so potassium is important the there. The wife. The wife analogy. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> that one will go viral. It already did. <laughs> it already did, Rob. It already did. <laughs> that's right. Something about the hips, I, yes. I recall. Yes, yeah. that's exactly right. <laughs> Something like that. But, um, yeah, so absolutely. If you... Uh, you need a lot of the potassium just to, to manage the water, to, to, to fill out all of those grains. But when you're ripening, and this year was a good one because we had a lot of problems with dry down this year. Yep. But a lot of those issues with dry down, that's molybdenum, that's boron. So high rates of boron with enough molybdenum to balance it to increase the uptake. That's really important to ripen a crop. Partner that with the macros of potassium. And then probably a lead into another controversial uh, thing we could talk about is even phosphorus. Yeah. So I, I debate whether or not phosphorus is really that essential in the seed furrow. I encounter purpling and phosphorus deficiency every spring that I walk fields. Don't get me wrong, but I don't think it's a true limitation of the nutrient. I think it's more or less a cold soil. And these cold soils are limiting that fungal growth. They're limiting the soil's respiration. And we're not getting the transport of the phosphorus into the plant. And then that's back to that nitrogen and calcium where it, you have enough of this stuff, but it's not there where you need it at the time you need it. Well, it, you think about phosphorus energy, right? Phosphorus is high energy. Y y so I think to myself, when is the plant needing or trying to push the most energy for yield? Babies. Much, much further on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the the end. Yeah. Just like your own kids. I mean, you're not feeding them Red Bulls, you know? <laughs> In <laughs> That's infancy. That's what I've been doing wrong. Whoops. Alfred yeah. needs yeah. a Red Bull. Yeah. 
<laughs> no, he doesn't. <laughs> but yeah, like uh, like a soluble phosphorus that we use, you're talking like that's the Red Bull of the fertilizer world. So instead of like, I mean, because there's a lot of guys, and I've been subject to this too, where it's like, well, this is an easy place to put our phosphor for the year. Let's just shoot that in furrow, you know, and that's our FOSS plan. Eh. Eh. I, I, uh, I generally recommend nitrogen. So I do like in furrow applications. Never skip on your in furrow or a seed treatment and things like that. But we're not talking UAN in furrow. Uh, you can burn things with high rates. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. I have to, I have to, for legal purposes, state we're not recommending but, UAN in the seed trench. Yeah, no, no, not Thank on you. top of a seed. Right, right. But so, yeah, you, I, yeah. I have to clarify that because trust me, there are people out there that will go, "I run my UAN in furrow now." <laughs> Don't do that. We're talking the importance of nitrogen early on in a plant's development. Nit- yes, exactly. I'm yes. talking at a nutrient. Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. But I like for ripening phases. I like my potassium, my phosphorus, uh, my boron, my molybdenum. You know, even some copper. Copper promotes ethylene. Ethylene will help dry things down, promote ripening, dry down, and death. So it, those are your more important late season nutrients. Micros. Micros. We're out of time on this. We're going to have to do a part two. We have to really dig into that. Dude, so I want to ask you because your background originally was in seed genetics, right? Yeah, so I, I have a degree in breeding plants yeah. for environmental stress tolerance. So I want to ask you about because I had a hybrid this year that it was. They they said that the, I don't know whether it was the male or the female did expressed extremely heavy test weight or whatever more so and so that this was I want to I want to kind of rip the bandaid off of what genetics are capable of accentuating different genes instead of oh this one yielded better or this one yielded better why well like, like why in those tra- you know what in those certain traits the males and the females mm. are we looking for that the female responds to this or the male does this i want to uncover that a little bit if we can because man there's been a lot of talk and guys are selecting hybrids right now for next year well yield in general it's it's not as easy there's so think back to your biology classes now right okay just five minutes no, no, no. Just he stop. says we're out. We have <laughs> to go to part two. Okay. Battery's part died. Two. Pause. Yeah. Great <laughs> to swap see you cards. Guys. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Stay tuned to part for part two. Uh, yeah. Roll on. Thank you. See you guys. Guys, if you've liked the information that you've seen so far, go ahead and check out the full-length podcast on our YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe there. It's also on all the major plat- podcast platforms. Um, we're constantly dropping info and more content on all the social media platforms, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, etc. Check it out for a lot more content.